As promised, we are starting a brand new series going over the top 10 best weapons in every Souls game for PvE. But for today, we're going to start off with the Demon Souls. Now, all the gameplay is just going to be from the PS5 remake, but this list is still going to be valid for the PS3 version as well. Now, there are going to be some good weapons that just don't make it to the list because Demon Souls tends to be pretty balanced and a lot of these weapons are very viable. So if you feel like something is really good and deserves to be on the list, just let me know down in the comments. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's just get started. Starting off at number 10, we have the Claymore, the good or reliable that's just amazing in every single game. And Demon Souls is just no exception. Now, this Claymore does fall under the large sword category, which this weapon category is extremely good. The movesets are just amazing. The light attacks and heavy attacks are very fluid and smooth. Get good variety with horizontal swipes and vertical swipes. They get some very solid range. They don't weigh as much, nor do they consume much stamina as well. But as for the Claymore in particular, this one is good because one, it looks amazing. It just has like the coolest design out of all the other large swords in my opinion. And two, it just gets some really good damage out of all the other large swords that can be infused or buffed. This one just gets the highest amount of base damage and it performs well with like multiple different types of infusions as well. Definitely going to be one of the more popular quality or faith based options in the game. Now for me, the only downside that the Claymore actually does have is that it doesn't get any poking attacks, which like every other Claymore in all the other games get solid poking attacks. But unfortunately, this one doesn't because poking attacks are really nice because they're very quick, cover a lot of range. And in a game like this, that would definitely benefit because there's plenty of tight corridors to where you have to fight enemies and poking attacks just perform extremely well. But there's really like nothing I can say that's bad about this weapon. It's just really good. Number nine, we have the Night Sword. Now, the reason as to why I liked the Claymore is going to be the exact same reason I liked the Night Sword. It doesn't do anything too flashy, but it does nothing wrong as well. This weapon is a straight sword, which they arguably have one of the best movesets in the entire game. You get nice horizontal swipes, vertical swipes, they're all very quick. And with the one-handed moveset, you actually do get a poke as well, which I definitely prefer to have it one-handed over two-handed. Not just because of the poking attacks, but because the light attack combo does come out a lot faster. And those running attacks are extremely good. They cover so much distance because they lunge really far and they're incredibly quick. But the reason we're going to pick the Knight Sword more so over the other straight swords is because once again, it gets the highest base damage and it gets amazing scalings with different types of infusions. This thing gets an S scaling and strength when you actually have it crushing infused, which is extremely unique for a small, quicker based weapon. So if you have a strength based build and you're using like a very large weapon that's very slow and you're kind of struggling to hit quicker based enemies, you can go ahead and switch to this thing and you can still get amazing damage out of it. Or you can just have this bad boy fire infused and have yourself a dragon knight sword, which is one, a very cool name. And two, it can get you a lot of damage without having to put points into anything except for like health and endurance. Now, the only downside that I really can say about the knight sword is that you can't really get it early on. You have to beat like at least a quarter of the game until you can acquire it. But once you do acquire it, it is going to be really good and it is definitely deserving to be a top 10 weapon in this game. Number eight, we have the Large Sword of Moonlight, the Demon Souls version of the Moonlight Greatsword and probably the coolest looking weapon in the entire game. Now this is going to be the best faith-based weapon in my opinion, probably right next to the Meridian Hammer when you have it blessed infused, but I'm probably going to prefer this one a little bit more because it just has a bunch of upsides going for it. One, it just gets a pure faith scaling and requirement, so you don't have to go into any other stats at all, you can just go all into your faith, which is going to pair nicely alongside your miracles too. It does get pure magic damage, so you have to worry about split damage at all. This weapon also gets the highest durability in the entire game, and it only weighs two units, which for being a large sword, that is just incredible. Like this thing weighs just as much as like most straight swords in the game. And to keep going down the list of positives, this is one of the few weapons in the game that cannot be blocked at all. So going up against enemies that actually have shields is just going to completely bypass it and you'll just do maximum damage. And on top of that, this weapon also just gets boosted magic damage negation. When you just have it equipped, you can just take a bunch less magic damage to the point where when you guard with it, you just block 80% of magic damage in total. And you combine that with the fact that it is a large sword, so it gets a very good moveset. And also the fact that you can get it very early on as well means it actually ends up being one of the better weapons in the entire game. But there are going to be some downsides to this weapon though. And that's one, upgrading the weapon actually doesn't improve the base damage. All it does is improve the scalings, which it does get an S scaling in faith. So I kind of guess it does counteract that. Uh, two, which is not really much of a problem as I just wish that it just had a projectile attack like the other Moonlight Greatswords had, which I guess it probably wouldn't really suit this game and I'll end up making it the best weapon in the entire game if it did have a projectile. But overall, it's still going to be an amazing weapon and just using it based on its looks purely is just enough reason to put it in the top 10. Number seven, we have the Killage. Now this weapon is a curve sword of which this weapon class is also just really good. Their movesets are so incredibly quick to the point where they're almost just as fast as daggers, but they actually get some nice range. They get a very solid lunge with their light attack combos. They don't weigh much. They can just output amazing DPS and they do get passive bleed as well, which bleed in this game isn't too crazy but it is going to result in more damage in some cases. And the slashing damage that this actually does get is just going to be better than the standard damage counterparts that you get with daggers and straight swords. Now, the only downside that you probably could say with curved swords that it doesn't really get much variety with its movesets, but with how fast the attacks actually do come out, it's not that big of a deal. 
but the reason we're going to go with the Killage in particular is because it's just the highest damaging one. It just does the most damage and it could just outperform like all the other curve swords with any type of infusion. But most importantly, you can get this weapon like very early on. It doesn't really require you to kill anything at all. You can just go pick it up and it can carry you from start to finish without any type of problems at all. Number six, we have the winged spear, which yes, it is going to be a spear. That means it gets a bunch of poking attacks and these poking attacks come out very fast. They're basically exactly like rapiers, but just a little bit more range and maybe a little bit more variety with its movesets. The things that I like most about the spears will be its heavy attacks, especially that follow-up heavy attack. It comes out so fast to where it can just like one combo a bunch of different types of smaller enemies. But being that actually has this nice range, you can just use it at a safer distance and you can just outrange a bunch of other enemies that use things like straight swords or curved swords. Now probably like the obvious downside to things like spears is that you don't really get any types of horizontal swipes except for maybe it's rolling attack. So when it comes to hitting enemies that are like a very skinny, you're probably gonna have a pretty rough time, but those instances are very far and few because in almost every single case, the spears are just going to be amazing weapons, which for the winged spear in particular, you guessed it, it just gets the most damage out of all the other spears. It is going to be the best one. It gets solid range, really good damage, good scalings and all infusions. It doesn't have much requirements at all, only 13 strength and 12 dexterity. And combined with the fact that you can also get it very early on, it can easily carry you from start to finish. Number five, we have the Hiltzless Katana. Now, katanas are basically the exact same thing as curve swords. They're slashing type weapons that have some pretty quick movesets and they do have passive bleed, but the difference being is that katanas are just a little bit slower, but they just have more range and there's more damage. But I actually do prefer them a little bit more, not only because of that extra range and extra damage that it does get, but it just has the better moveset in my opinion, because it also does get access to piercing type damage and poking attacks with this incredibly fast running light attack that it does get. Katana running light attacks that has always been amazing in every single game. And it's definitely true for Demon Souls as well. But the reason I like the Hiltzless the best out of all the other Katanas is because it's just the highest damaging one. It just outputs so much DPS. It can proc bleed very quickly quickly. And it also gets an S scaling and dexterity without having to worry about farming a bunch of different types of stones because it does just require a colorless demon souls, which can be a pain in the ass to get because you might have to sacrifice a bunch of stone of ephemeral eyes to get there, but it's definitely worth it because the damage is just really good. Now, unfortunately, the downside of the Hiltzless itself is that it does take away your health with every single hit. Every single time that you land an attack, you do get 3% of your health just taken away from you. Which if you're just fighting like one enemy or a boss, it might not seem like that big of a deal. But if you're going from area to area and clearing out a bunch of different enemies, it might stack up and you might see itself as somewhat of a problem. And in that instance, you're probably just better off going with the Uchi Katana, which that weapon is not going to get as much damage. But if you don't want to deal with that health penalty, then that could be a good alternative. But you can get both of these weapons somewhat early into the game. Doesn't really require much progress to access them. But due to the hilt loss just outputting so much damage, being able to get buffed, having that S scaling and strength, it's definitely deserving to be a top five weapon in this game. Number four, we have the Northern Regalia. Now this weapon is very unique, but it also is extremely powerful for a lot of different reasons. Now starting off with, this thing does get split magic damage. It is a large sword, so it does get that pretty nice moveset. This also does get requirements in every single type of damaging stat, strength, dexterity, magic, and faith, but it actually doesn't get requirements for any of them, which means putting points into these stats doesn't actually improve the damage at all, but there actually is still a way to improve the damage, and that is by your character tendency. Having pure black or pure white character tendency would just result in 540 more AR, which is just honestly insane amount of damage. Now, not to be confused, there is actually a difference between character tendency and weld tendency. The best way to get to pure white tendency will be to kill black phantoms, and the best way to get to pure black tendency, which is probably a lot easier, and that's just like kill random NPCs. Get yourself to black tendency, and you're just going to be doing so much damage that the lack of scalings are just not going to be that big of a deal anyway. The gameplay that you're seeing right now is in new game plus two, and it's still just shredding enemies. Which the fact that you don't have to worry about your damaging stats means that you can just go all into your health and stamina, and you could just tank so many attacks and a swing forever and still get good damage. It's just amazing. Now the way that I'm talking about it kind of makes it seem like it should be like in the top three at least, but the main reason it's gonna get lower on the list for me is that you do have to beat the game to actually get it. You need to combine two different weapons of which one of them is right at the end of the game. So it is going to be something that you can only really use in New Game Plus. But with how challenging and annoying New Game Plus is, the Northern Regalia can make that entire experience very easy. But once you do acquire the Northern Regalia, you actually don't have to upgrade it at all because it already comes fully maxed out. Now this weapon also cannot be buffed, which might be unfortunate. So when you're going to like really late New Games, you're probably better off switching to another weapon because you still are going to be capped with how much damage you can output and keeping track of your character tendency can be somewhat annoying as well, but it still is going to be one of the best weapons in the entire game. Number three, the Dragon Bone Smasher. This thing hits 
so fucking hard. Like, I mean, it just like yeets enemies, sends them flying, smashes them to the ground and does so much damage. Probably going to be your best strength based weapon in the entire game. This weapon does fall under the very large sword category. So that means it's going to have a very slow moveset and going to weigh a lot as well and cost a lot of stamina. So there's going to be some amount of stat investment put into it. But by the time that you do acquire this weapon, you should have a good amount of points put into strength and endurance anyway. So it'll probably end up being a smoother transition. And when you do, you're just going to notice how powerful it actually is because every single attack just does so much damage and you do get solid variety with its moveset with some nice vertical swipes and very good horizontal swipes especially with that two-handed running attack it just covers so much distance and so much range and as seeing enemies is going to send flying is just really funny because as soon as they get back up you can just have another charged heavy attack coming right at their head and you can just rinse and repeat and just constantly stun lock enemies and on top of the fact that it can do this much damage it can also just get buffed you can buff the weapon to just further improve the damage and also when you do have this weapon equipped you also get a boost to your fire damage negation, which unfortunately, when you acquire this weapon, the fire section is basically already done. But when you do go into New Game Plus, it is going to be a nice benefit to have. Now, the only piece of advice that I do have with this weapon is that you definitely want to spec into a lot of endurance because that stamina cost is very high and you can get punished very quickly if you just end up spamming recklessly. Number two, we have the Blue Blood Sword. Now, this is another straight sword, which I've mentioned before. They just have amazing movesets because they just have very fast speeds and really good variety as well. Now, for the Blue Blood Sword in particular, this thing actually does get split magic damage. And it also does get requirements in all of the four damaging stats. 18 in every single one, Strength, Dexterity, Magic, and Faith, which thankfully actually does get scalings in some of these. But unfortunately, you only get a D scaling in Strength, an E scaling in Magic, and an E scaling in Faith. So your damage returns aren't going to be that good if you put points into these stats. But one thing that this does that all other weapons in the game don't do is actually scale off your luck stat, which typically your luck stat doesn't really improve weapon damage at all because the main benefit of the luck stat is to just further improve your item chance drop rate. So you're just like more likely to just get item drops. But the cool thing about this is that it actually scales extremely well with luck to the point where when you actually go into higher levels, you can just still get amazing returns because typically once you go past like 40 or 50 points into a particular stat, you're not going to really notice much benefit by continuing to level that stat up. But with luck, it actually works differently to where you can just get so much damage with a blue blood sword just by specking into the luck stat, which combined with the fact that you can just get really good drop rates is just going to make for a very solid experience playing through the game. But the positives don't just end there as well. One, this thing doesn't need to be upgraded once you acquire the weapon, which is like roughly about a quarter into the playthrough. It just comes fully maxed out. There are no materials needed to upgrade it. And this weapon can get buffed. You can pair it alongside Light's weapon or Curse weapon and just get so much more damage with this build. At higher levels of magic and luck, this thing could probably just have the highest DPS in the entire game. But the reason I'm not going to put it at number one is because it does have very high requirements, like having to spec into 18 of every single stat and then also specking into a bunch of luck just to boost your damage can be pretty costly but with how much damage it does do it definitely is deserving of the number two spot now in terms of an honorable mention i want to give a quick shout out to the falchion and the longsword but specifically i want to talk about the infused versions the crescent falchion and the dragon longsword the plus one variants because you actually can acquire them pretty early on in the game and the fact that they're already infused and partly upgraded when you do acquire them means it's actually going to be very good for early game so if you're struggling to get through the first part of the game maybe picking up one of these two weapons can just make it a lot easier of an experience but the reason why they're not going to be on the list still is because obviously that is directly outclassed by a bunch of other weapons in this game and i do recommend going elsewhere when you do get past that first part of the game Number one, we have the Meat Cleaver, which I can talk about the Great Axe as well, because that weapon does work very similar. And in certain situations, it actually can outperform the Meat Cleaver with particular infusions, but the Meat Cleaver just has a bunch more positives going for it, hence it being number one. And that's starting off with its scalings. It gets an S scaling in Strength, and S scaling in Dexterity, and an A scaling in Faith, which this is absolutely unprecedented to just have multiple stats that have S scalings and have an additional one that just gets an A scaling. This weapon is a large hammer, which they tend to have just amazing movesets, really quick initial light attack. Get some nice horizontal swipes. You get a nice solid vertical swipe with your heavy attack. And its rolling attack is probably the best part about it. it does actually serve as a nice AoE, which that entire AoE just does maximum damage. You don't actually have to hit with the weapon directly to just benefit off that damage. And being that it is a large hammer, it actually does benefit off the Master's Ring because it does have that sweet spot damage as well. This weapon can also be buff which means you can just further improve the damage i don't know how this thing gets two s scalings and a scaling and can be buffed you also get health regen for every single hit every time you hit with it you just get one percent more health back which isn't that much but the fact that you're just getting health regen for every single hit is still going to be really good and in terms of acquiring this weapon all you're going to do is just kill the adjudicator and then trade in a plus zero club you don't have to upgrade anything for the entire playthrough because the meat cleaver also doesn't require to be upgraded no materials whatsoever just trade in your plus zero club and you just get a fully maxed out meat cleaver. So yes, for all those reasons, I think the meat cleaver is going to be the best weapon in Demon Souls. 
Anyway, that pretty much concludes it for this one. If you have your own opinions, definitely let me know down in the comments below. As for the next video, we are going to be covering the top 10 best Dark Souls 1 weapons. So definitely do subscribe for that if you haven't already. And do check me out on Twitch because I am live there every single day doing a bunch of random challenge runs. Anyway, see you guys around. Bye.